Hey guys, so I know a lot of people were expecting a pure DPS theorycraft video for Argos, and we are going to talk about that a little bit. But one thing I really wanted to find out about Argos is the best way to go about doing damage. One or two DPS phases per void energy stun phase. Before we begin, I didn't really want to retest every single weapon in the game on Argos for a couple of reasons. One, no weapon archetypes really got changed since Callus, except for auto rifles. And two, the Argos damage phase doesn't last nearly as long as Callus, where primary and energy weapons had more of an impact. I'm sure that eventually someone else will put out a video about a weapon that is unexpectedly good, but until then, I don't have much reason to believe that anything has really changed. Auto rifle crit modifiers did get reduced, so they aren't as strong anymore, but they were so much better than every other weapon that they're still among the best options, even though it does make other options not as detrimental. During the fight, you have the opportunity to do two DPS phases before Argos does one void energy phase if you're fast enough. There's a way to tell what the next energy orbs that you need to destroy will be in the sequence. The elements go in a rotation from void to solar to arc to void. So whatever the elements are for the first set of orbs, those will all rotate in the same direction for the next set, but only if you do that set before the void energy phase. For example, if you have two solar and one arc for the first set, the second set will be two arc and one void immediately after the shield closes, but before the void energy phase. So with six cannons, you can put two in solar, three in arc and one in void, and you'll be able to do two sets of damage as long as you move quick enough and you do need to be quick. If you wait until after the void energy phase, it does not follow that rule and it just resets. This begs the question, what's actually better? Two DPS phases, or one DPS phase with three Vex Cranium Cannons. First, we should figure out how much the Vex Cannons actually do, which is pretty simple. Each cannon has 40 shots, you get three cannons, and they all do 13,145 damage per tick per crit, and critting an entire cannon is pretty easy. Add all of that up and you get 1.578 million damage just from cannons and you can get that done pretty quickly. It only takes about 4 seconds to empty a cannon, which is usually the amount of time it takes for teams to get into position anyway. You get approximately 24 seconds with the unstable energy buff, which is our time frame for damage. Cannons are not affected by empowering rift. So in order for 2 DPS phases to be better than 1 DPS, we need to do another 1.6 million damage at a minimum in the second phase, which actually doesn't sound like that much. Before we get to figuring out how to generate that much damage, we should first figure out what the best options are for damage on the boss in general. Our damage window is a lot shorter than Callus, which means high burst weapons are preferred. As we learned with Callus, things like Merciless and Cluster Bomb Rockets were the ideal. Merciless doesn't work as well on Argos due to range issues, but Cluster Bomb Rockets are as good as ever and continue to be the ideal burst damage weapon for bosses like this. Aiming for the forehead or the top of the boss is going to yield the best results in terms of your Cluster Bombs hitting due to the way that the Cluster Bombs end up falling. We did some tests comparing Sins of the Past and Curtain Call in terms of damage, but they were basically the same. However, Curtain Call gets the Rate of Fire advantage, which is a factor in damage. We also tested the new rocket launcher, the classical, classic, whatever it is, but it only has a capacity of 5 rockets to the Curtain Call and Sins 6. In terms of damage per rocket, the variance is high based on where you hit the boss and how many clusters end up hitting the boss. We saw rockets as high as 130,000 damage per and as low as 65,000, with the 65,000 damage rocket being a rocket that had one cluster hitting the boss as a result of hitting directly on the boss's, I guess, face, eyeballs, the red, the red sensors. The point is, variance is high. 
For example, one test averaged 93,000 damage per rocket across the entire team, and another test averaged 73,250 damage, or basically 20,000 less damage per rocket. So if we take those averages in terms of rockets, 1.6 million divided by 93,000 gets us 17 rockets required across the entire team to match the damage. But the 73,000 average gets us 22 rockets required. With Empowering Rift, this reduces the amount of rockets required by about 18 to 20%. Now let's say you don't end up with any rockets on the second damage phase, what now? What can we do to make up that damage? Well, let's take some auto rifles into play and figure out what we're capable of. Hard light, probably something you haven't heard about in a little while. Hard light is an auto rifle that has no range fall off, and in my opinion, is one of the better options for DPS on this boss for that reason. But it's not so much better that you couldn't use any other auto rifle that you like using. The damage you gain per shot over other guns isn't significant enough that it makes it a must use. Hard light fires at a rate of 600 rounds per minute or 10 rounds per second. We get 23 to 24 seconds of time to damage, so that's 230 to 240 rounds. Let's say it takes a second or two to get into position, so 220 rounds total, maximum. At 1,378 damage a round, 220 rounds, assuming we have a barrier and never stop shooting for anything, despite the fact that that's not the greatest idea, we get just over 300,000 damage. Multiply by six if our entire team is using it and non-stop shooting to get us a little over 1.8 million damage. Multiply that by 1.2 if you have Empowering Rift to get us 2.19 million damage. This is a theory crafted number though. It is not a realistic number at all because you will have to deal with self-destructive harpies flying at you and the detainment prism, meaning you will lose damage time plus anything else that might happen. Even then, a theoretical perfect 600,000 damage or so isn't that much of an increase for the extra rushing around and craziness that you need to do. On average, my team was able to gather 8 to 14 rockets on the second DPS phase on any given attempt, so that plus any sort of auto rifle damage plus empowering rift on paper is able to eclipse the 1.6 million damage that we needed. But I'm not sure and I'm not convinced that this is the ideal way to go about doing Argos DPS for the average group. To speak anecdotally for a minute, even as we were practicing this strategy and getting clips and whatnot, I can't say that I was the hugest fan of doing two DPS phases. You need to move really quickly. There's not a lot of wiggle room. The issue is that you need to move so quick that it can be pretty difficult to restock back up on rockets. You need about 10 to 15 rockets between your entire team with Empowering Rift in order to beat just using three cannons, which doesn't sound like too much. But on our test runs, we were never able to overwhelmingly beat out our one DPS damage runs, sometimes not even beating it at all or just tying it. Granted, this is a strategy that I nor my team is used to running at all, so I'm sure with more practice, this is something that could end up being pretty good, and I realize that my and my group's inexperience with the strategy is a significant flaw in this experiment. I can't really declare one is better than the other unless I'm equally good at executing both strategies. But for any groups who are already doing a one DPS strategy, I can't say with any confidence that switching to a two DPS strategy is going to make your life a lot easier. The goal of a two DPS phase strategy seems like it would be to kill the boss before the third void energy phase. Before the second void energy phase is obviously a goal as well, but if you're capable of doing that, I don't really know why you're watching this video at all. Doing a one DPS strategy also enables you to kill the boss before a third void phase, so all you're going to do by switching to a two DPS phase strategy is just stress your team out. That being said, a second DPS phase does allow people to use up all of their ammo if they didn't happen to use it all in the first phase for whatever reasons. If you have an Orpheus Rig Hunter just spamming tethers and making tons of orbs, this allows for another wave of supers on the boss. We'll talk about supers in a minute. 
the biggest struggle with trying to find out what's better is consistency. And this is going to vary from team to team. If you get caught in a prism, if you miss a rocket reload, if you need to shoot seeker harpies, if you need to kill ads, these are all things that will impact your ability to do damage at any given moment. A big factor is just having power ammo to shoot at the boss. And if you're unable to scoop any ammo during a rotation, it's a big chunk of damage that you're gonna miss out on. I think one DPS phase is going to be way more consistent for the average group. But the more you practice the two DPS phase strategy, the better I think your damage can turn out. It really rewards having in-depth boss knowledge and being coordinated. We did end up testing Telesto as a counter to Merciless since Telesto does not get affected by range at all. And while initial damage impressions were pretty good, the amount of time it takes to fire the weapon really impacts how much damage you're able to do. The damage sounds impressive, 153,888 damage in four shots, but you'll only be able to get three magazines worth of Telesto off during an entire damage phase, which would be about 460,000 damage, but you can do that in half the time with cluster bomb rockets, so Telesto is kinda out. But if you don't have a cluster bomb rocket, Telesto is not bad. The Maestro 44 sniper rifle also underwent a test, but it was also unremarkable compared to a cluster bomb rocket. 13 shots at 29,667 damage a shot is 385,000 and change, which is not terrible considering it can be done in about 10 seconds, but because it doesn't beat cluster bomb rockets, I don't know how much I can recommend the sniper over cluster bombs, but it's not a horrible choice Again, if you don't want to use a rocket or don't have one. We also tested some supers on Argos. Historically speaking, the only supers you ever really wanted to use on bosses are things that are instant one-offs, like Celestial Nighthawk Golden Gun or Nova Bomb, because they're instant. They don't take that much time. Things like Dawnblade, Hammers, or melee-based supers take too long or just didn't work at all. But, and I know this isn't revolutionary information, the top block of Sunbreaker with the explosive hammers is a game changer. And this is where having an Orpheus Hunter spamming orbs can make that second DPS phase worth it. The top block of Sunbreaker has your hammers explode when they land. Due to the way that the explosions hit the boss, they hit it in a similar way that the cluster bombs do from a rocket, you can get up to 600,000 damage using hammers alone or at least I was capable of doing so in this example where I hit with six hammers, and it's possible to throw seven total if you throw fast enough. You might be only be able to get six. 600,000, Crota, step Jesus your sh No up. way. I can absolutely recommend the top block of hammers for boss damage. If you can get two supers while doing the two DPS phase strategy and you have enough people using supers that are actually effective, then you will definitely eclipse that 1.6 million in a significant enough way to make it worthwhile. Overall, here's what I recommend you do for damage, at least on normal mode. If Prestige is any different, we'll update. If you are a Sunbreaker, Voidwalker, or Nighthawk Gunslinger, you pop your super right away and use it as fast as possible. When it expires, you go use all of your rockets. When you run out of rockets, use anything that you have left, although you'll only have a few more seconds with the boss. If you didn't have a super, you should just use all of your rockets and then whatever tools you have to deal damage, grenades, anything. You should only be using a primary or energy weapon if it's the only thing that you have left in your arsenal. So what's the verdict? One or two DPS phases? More coordinated teams are going to benefit from a two DPS phase strategy, whereas less coordinated or newer teams are going to get the consistency that they need in order to beat the boss from one DPS phase. Through practice, you can shift into a two DPS phase strategy, but you definitely do not need to do that in order to kill Argos. But if you're struggling with damage, try one of those subclasses with the good supers, especially hammers and I think your damage will improve. If you enjoyed this video, a positive rating is appreciated. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.